We made it, boys. We are on the final episode of the Rags to Riches series. Across the series, we've made a lot of money. We've bought a lot of cool stuff as well. But now it's time to sort of put the cherry on top and show you guys how to make lots and lots of money so that you can set yourself up to buy literally whatever you want in this game. And yes, that includes a $10 million super yacht if you really wanted to buy it. So to cap off rags to riches, I'm going to be showing you the money making method I use to make around $7 million per day. It's taken us a while to get to the point where we're able to do this, but everything I've told you to buy along the way throughout this series has led to this moment because you're going to need pretty much all of it. So without any further ado, let's talk about the best money-making strategy in Grand Theft Auto Online. So before we get into the actual method and money-making strategies we're going to be using, I think it's important to set everyone's expectations for what a day is, right? For this method, I'm going to be saying a day is 10 hours of playing GTA. Now, I know that is a lot, right? Like, that's a crazy amount. But I've structured this in a way, and I'll sort of explain that at the end of the video, that even if you can only play a couple hours a day, this strategy still completely applies to you and is still the best way to make money in GTA. Now let's talk about how to actually get the money. For the strategy we're going to be using here, you're going to need six different businesses. The first one is the arcade. Along with that, we're going to be using three different MC businesses, the meth lab, the cocaine lockup, and the counterfeit cash factory. We're also going to be making use of the bunker and the nightclub. So if you haven't already been able to tell, this is not a guide for beginners. If this is the first video of mine that you've watched and you want to know how to get to this point, this is actually the finale of a nine episode series where I started as a level one and then got to this point now. So I'd recommend watching this series if you want to know how to get all of this stuff. So with that out of the way, let's jump in. The very first thing I want you to do is fly out to all of your businesses with the Oppressor Mark II that we bought last week and basically just resupply them. Go around and buy supplies for all of them. So that's going to cost you $75,000 per business, which if you've got the bunker, the meth lab, the cash factory, and the cocaine lockup is going to come to $300,000. Once you've done that, fly back to your arcade and we're going to start up a diamond casino heist. This is one of, if not the best way to make money in the game. And we're going to be running this heist a few times throughout this method. We're going to be rotating between silent and sneaky and the big con approach. The big con group sex approach is the easiest one in the game, so I definitely recommend doing that one first. The great thing about the Diamond Casino heist is Rockstar Games made it so that all of the setups can be completed solo. Obviously for the heist itself, you're going to need at least two people, and if you need friends to do that with, definitely join the Discord server, but you already know that by now. So for the big con approach, you're going to want to complete all of the optional setups except for Duggan Shipments. Duggan Shipments is going to reduce the amount of armor that the enemies inside the casino are going to have, but we don't actually plan on shooting anyone for the big con approach, so you're not going to need that. And you could definitely argue that you don't need the security camera one either if you already know where the cameras are. So race around on your oppressor, complete all of the setups. And if you're doing this solo, this shouldn't take more than about an hour and a half. If you're doing it with two people, I would say you could definitely do it in somewhere around an hour. So smash those out and then get into the heist finale. When it comes to the finale, you either want to do it with two or three people. And that completely depends on what is in the vault. If you've got artwork in the vault, definitely only do it with two people because artwork is going to take a lot less time to steal, so you don't need as many people in there to steal all of the artwork, which is good for you because that means you get a bigger slice of the final cut. If you have cash, gold, or diamonds in the vault, I would probably recommend doing it with three people just because those are going to take a bit longer to steal, so I'd just bring that third person along just to make sure that you get all of the loot. When it comes to picking your crew, I would definitely recommend getting the worst gunman and the worst driver. That way, they're not going to take as big of a cut. And I'd also get the best hacker available to you, which if you've been following this series, is going to be Paige. So how much money is this going to make us? Well, if we had artwork in the vault and we did it with two people, our potential take is around $2.4 million. 
400,000 of those dollars are gonna go to paying your driver, gunman, and hacker, which means you and your partner have $2 million to split between you. As the host, I always say you should be taking 60% of the cut because it's your arcade and you paid to set up the heist. So if you do take 60% of that cut and get out with all of the money, you're looking at $1.2 million. 90 minutes for all of the setups, and we'll say you fail the finale a couple of times. We'll give you a bit of leaning and see, let's say it takes half an hour. Realistically, you can definitely do the finale in less than half an hour. But just for the sake of rounding it out to two hours so the math is a lot easier, you just earned $1.2 million in two hours, which comes out to $600,000 an hour, which is pretty good. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't just start up another Diamond Casino heist straight away, but on the bright side, that kind of works in our favor. We're going to have to wait around 10 to 15 minutes for Lester to call us back and let us start another heist. So while we wait, fly back out to all of your businesses and resupply them again. Once you've resupplied them, fly back to the city again, and we're gonna smash out two quick missions before we start up another heist. The first is a VIP mission called Headhunter. If you don't know how to start one of these up, go into your interaction menu, click on SecuroServe and register as a VIP or CEO, go back into that menu, click on VIP work and start it up. With your Oppressor Mark II, this mission is going to be ridiculously easy. It shouldn't take more than like three minutes. And that's going to pay you out somewhere around $21,000 to $23,000. Once you finish that, request your terabyte through the interaction menu by going down to services, terabyte, and request terabyte. Head over to where your terabyte spawns, go inside, click on the touch screen, click client jobs, and start up a robbery in progress. If you're lucky enough to have the drone station upgrade on your terabyte, you'll have access to another client job called Diamond Shopping. I would recommend doing that one if you have it. But on this account, we don't have it yet, so we're going to start up a robbery in progress. Again, with your Oppressor Mark II, this should not take long at all. This one might take a little bit longer than a headhunter, so we'll say five minutes max for this one. And the robbery in progress is actually going to pay a little bit more than the headhunter, so just over $30,000 for this one. By the time you've completed this mission, Lester should have called you, letting you know you can start up another Diamond Casino heist. So go back there and this time set it up using the silent and sneaky approach. This time for the silent and sneaky approach, I would actually recommend doing all of the optional setups. And again, they should only take around an hour and a half to complete. 30 minutes to complete the finale. And again, you'll have earned somewhere around $1.2 million. So at this point, you're probably about four hours in. You would have made hopefully somewhere around $2.4 million from the heists, just around $50,000 from the two missions we did in between the heists. Now it's time to change it up. While we've been completing these heists, in the background, our other five businesses have been creating product for us. Again, those businesses are the Bunker, the Nightclub, the Cocaine Lockup, Meth Lab, and Counterfeit Cash Factory. Those businesses right now are probably getting really close to being completely full, so it's time to sell them and make a lot more money. Now, if you're not a numbers guy, you're gonna have to bear with me because I know a lot of people are gonna wanna know exactly how much money these sales are gonna get you. So I apologize, there are gonna be a lot of numbers flying around here. If we start with the cocaine lockup, taking into consideration that we bought supplies instead of stealing them, our profit per hour is gonna be $46,500. Shout out to the guys on Reddit that put these numbers together. I wouldn't have been able to do these myself. So I'll definitely leave a link to the post below where you can have a look at these numbers for yourself. So $46,500 per hour. We've been playing at this point for just over four hours. So we'll round up and say about $200,000 for this sale. If you're unfamiliar with the MC businesses, for these sales, you're going to have multiple sell vehicles, so you're definitely not going to want to do this solo. I would recommend having at least three people. Again, if you need people to help you out with this stuff, the link to the Discord server will be below. So go ahead, sell the cocaine that's in your cocaine lockup. Don't forget to resupply the business again, and then we're going to do the exact same thing for the rest of our businesses. Moving on to the meth lab, our profit per hour is $30,000. 30,000 times four is 120,000. So go ahead and sell that one. We'll move on to the counterfeit cash factory, which is $27,000 an hour. We'll just round up to $30,000 because I like round numbers. So again, $120,000 for that sale. Next, we're gonna go sell our bunker stock. Now keep in mind, all of our staff are working on manufacturing as opposed to research and manufacturing. 
So for this one, taking into consideration that we bought supplies again, that's going to get us $60,000 per hour. 60,000 times four is 240,000. And finally, we move on to the nightclub where unfortunately it does get even a little bit more complicated. At the time I'm recording this, we only have four technicians working for our nightclub as opposed to five, which we could have. And those four technicians are getting sporting goods, South American imports, pharmaceuticals, and cash creation. South American Imports is going to get us $10,000 per hour. Pharmaceuticals is going to get us eight and a half thousand. Cash Creation is going to get us $7,000 per hour. And Sporting Goods is going to get us seven and a half thousand dollars per hour. All of that comes out to $33,000 per hour times four because we've been playing for four hours. Comes out to just over $130,000. Once we complete that cell mission, Tony is going to take 10% of that, which is 13,000, which brings that number down to just under 120,000 but we'll round up to 120 again just because it makes it easier to do the math and I'll put that math on screen so we got $200,000 for selling our cocaine, $120,000 for selling the meth, another $120,000 for the counterfeit cash, $240,000 for the bunker and $120,000 again for the nightclub. You add all of those together and you get $800,000 for what probably took, if we're being lenient and giving you extra time, we'll say an hour max, like very max. Realistically, I'd say this would take somewhere between 30 to 45 minutes. Actually, we'll, we'll say an hour, okay? Because that makes it a lot easier to do all of the math. So at this point, we're five hours in, we've done two diamond casino heists, and we've sold all of our product. After five hours of game time, we've earned $1.2 million from both heists, which comes to $2.4 million. And the hour we spent selling all of our product, we got $800,000. Add that together, and for five hours, we have somewhere around $3.2 million. If you can do that strategy once per day, you've got $3.2 million. If you can do it twice per day, you're sitting at somewhere around $6.4, $6.5 million. And while the numbers can get confusing along the way, I know there's a lot of numbers, it's definitely doable and repeatable. And this is why I wanted to sort of set everyone's expectations for what a day is at the start of the video. Because if you're in school and it's a weekend, you got nothing to do, you can definitely play for 10 hours a day. But if you work full time and you only have a few hours in the afternoon, maybe you can only do this process once, maybe not even once, maybe you can only do half of one full cycle. So I hope I sort of made this easy enough that if you can only play, you know, two hours a day and you can only do one heist and one cell mission, you're still going to be making, you know, one and a half to two million dollars. So yeah, man, that's it. That is rags to riches done and dusted because with this grinding method, you're going to be able to save up really quickly to get whatever you want. So I hope you enjoyed the video and man, I hope you enjoyed the series. It's been a journey over the past about, what, three months. So it's been a long journey. Kind of sad to see it all come to the end, but I hope I've helped a lot of people out. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed Rags to Riches, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And consider subscribing because we're not going to stop with the guides and the GTA content. They're still going to be coming out. So make sure you subscribe for that. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Poise! Find me on the mountaintop. 